Bonko presents Pop Talk Live from Hall H at San Diego Comic Con with our guest Rosario Dawson. Hi. Have fun. Thank you. Hey, your your little Funko is so cute. Oh, thank you. She's got her little attitude too. <laughs> Power pose. I like it. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Are you ready for pop talk? I I. <laughs> Not as ready as they are. <laughs> I mean, I'm super excited. I got to meet Billy backstage. I'm obsessed. I've been watching Cobra Kai since it was just being put online, the show I didn't know I needed. I love that show. So, um, yes. Comic-Con. A, yes. a lot of people running around just collecting everything that they love. Yeah. Uh, they're represented. What, what do you love in pop culture, and do you collect anything in pop culture? Receipts. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, I, um, I have like a few things that I've collected over the years, books and some figurines. Um, I started really getting into Funko Pops, um, which are really cute. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that I've collected forever, though, which I have fewer of these days, is movie stubs. I know it's not exactly sort of in the same thing, but I've always loved having them. And, you know, they start fading, sadly, but I love looking over them and the memories of going to the theater. <laughs> so you do a romantic comedy. No one's really going to be bugging you at a Comic-Con event. Uh, you do, you know, a small role in a, you know, Star Wars show. You probably have a different effect on fans. What, what is it like to, to act and do what you love to do, but like putting it into the pop culture and then having fans just be rabid about your work and then change your life in terms of like, they're just the passion for what you do, the excitement for what you do, the want to take a picture with you. I mean, your products that get to be on shelves that people collect, that people have you sign. I mean, what is that like compared to traditional roles you've, you've been in? Um, well, I, you know, I, I realized I've been coming to Comic-Con for 18 years. And that was the first time I came. The first time I came was for Sin City. And, you know, I, I've been to a bunch of different kinds of cons over the years because I have a comic book that I developed with my friend David um, and Tony Shastine, the OCT. And so, like, I just love these cons. I love the costumes that people come up with. I love the cosplay. I love the conversations. And over the years, like, yes, at this point now, most of the stuff that I'm signing and, and, and people are talking to me about is for Ahsoka, for sure. Um, but I just love, like, over the years, over the years, people having stuff from Josie and the Pussycats and Rent and, you know... Every once in a while, like I have to say, whenever I do a signing, there's always one person who brings something from Pluto Nash, which cracks me up, because I really thought only my mom had seen that film. Um, so like, I just, I just love the fandom. You know, I come from a very geeky family. Um, we get very obsessed and have very serious deliberations around Star Trek and Star Wars and what's best and what era and who ruined it and who didn't. Um, and, you know, my Uncle Gus is a comic book artist, and he's come here for many years, Gustavo Vazquez, who's really dope, who's been drawing me Spider-Man since I was a little kid, and used to make me read his comics over my, hit my shoulder. He would flip the pages. Um, I couldn't touch them, I couldn't breathe on them, and that just made me feel like they were sacred text. So it was the reason why I knew Sin City was a big deal and Frank Miller was a big deal when the rest of my team didn't think so, and what Robert Rodriguez was doing when he quit the DGA so he could co-direct that with Frank Miller and recognize him. And that's before 300, that's before all these really big films, you know, and it's just amazing to me. So I, I, I always look at everything I do through the lens of, of nerddom and you know, I can work on Dope Sick with Michael Keaton and be like, that's my forever Batman. <laughs> I, I'm sure you were excited to audition for Ahsoka, but like in your mind... Didn't audition. Oh, well there you go. Wow. All right, well, let's switch it a little bit. 
Okay, let's switch it a little bit. Are you ready for what's coming? You know this is like, a, a, I mean, it's a huge deal, right? I mean, your life is probably going to be slightly different after this thing. When you have your own series, you're leading your own series. There's a lot of a younger generation Star Wars fans that are as rabid as the older fans. I mean, this is, this is going to change your life, right? Yeah, I, I don't know how to wrap my head around it, right? But I do know I've been in this industry for decades and I'm excited to interact with people who've been in love with Star Wars and interacting with that universe for decades. And one of the things that I really love, particularly about the property, is that it's not just like, oh, it's popular. And I just think that's really dope. And, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I've worked with Mary before and, and everyone now knows at least that she's on our show, especially because you and let that out of the bag. Um, and, you know, she was talking about with Obi-Wan coming out, you know, it was just like a different thing, you know, people coming up to him. But it's not like some of the other stuff. Like I have people being like, you never go to mouth, you know? And I'm like, we're at Disneyland, guys. Like, tone it down. Um, this is different, you know, like this is, this is people coming up to him very hushly and being, may the force be with you. Um, and, uh, and I know it means something different, not just to fans and sort of the outside kind of perspective of what it meant for my mom and like my family. Like my mom was 16 years old when she got pregnant with me, 17 when she had me and 18 when she got married. She went through a lot um, and to be watching the Mandalorian episode with her and for her daughter to be saying, may the force be with you officially, because it's not like we don't all say it regularly, um, was like brought tears to her eyes. And it just was really great to be able to um, just recognize all the sacrifices she made to make it possible for me to be here today. That's awesome. So there's always a lot of Star Wars fans. There's also a lot of Star Trek fans. People know you have an affinity for Star Trek. Um, who's your favorite? I bring this up with Dave all the time. He yeah. kids me all the time, believe yeah. me. It's a whole thing. Like, I, I'm crossing the streams, okay, people? I'm crossing the streams. <laughs> who's your favorite? Who's your favorite character on Star Trek? I mean, Sir Patrick Stewart, Jean-Luc Picard, obviously. <laughs> Computer, Earl Grey, hot tea, whatever. Um, I, you know, I've actually was always a really big Worf fan. I love Klingon. I think that it's amazing that like, like the Bible's been translated to Klingon and people listen to Klingon operas like for real, which I think is just amazing. You can learn Klingon on Duolingo. Did you know that? Duolingo's here, by the way. I saw the little bird. I was wanting to see him at some point. Um, but I think it's so interesting because in Star Wars, my Ahsoka, which a lot of people don't know, I wear a forehead piece. And they literally put a prosthetic over my forehead so that there's no cre uh, creases in the lines. So it's kind of hard because it does you know, minimize some of the expressions I can make. But you know, she doesn't have eyebrows, so we got to cover that. And I was always really fascinated by that, that um, you know, that, there, that, that was with, with Worf and all of those types. The prosthetics were always just something that I was very interested in. And so I just think it's really funny that in the space opera I'm in, that I still get to wear a forehead piece, even though if I'm, I'm not a Klingon. <laughs> Um, if you weren't acting, what would you do? Um, I had wanted when I was younger to be a marine biologist, actually. All right. I thought that would have been really, really cool. And I'm, I'm friends with a couple of marine biologists, and it is as dope as it is. Like, you know, trying to save marine life in a bikini is like my kind of superhero outfit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, you're not just doing Ahsoka. You got other things going on. What else are you working on right now? Um, well, I have a fashion line <laughs> called Studio 189. We are based in Ghana. Um, this was actually one of our biggest orders. We're in Bloomingdale's right now with this, with a collaboration with Aqua. We had 20,000 yards batiked that were made. Um, I took a bunch of video videos and pictures because as a New Yorker, like, I used to walk up from the Lower East Side up to Midtown. Yes, I had some New York. See, New York will always let you know. They will always let you know. And I used to go up walking with my best friend, Rosalie, whose birthday it is today. Happy birthday, Rosalie. Um, and we used to walk from the Lower East Side all, like 50 blocks up to Midtown and then 50 blocks back. And anytime a limo would pass by, we'd smile. We'd say smile and get discovered. <laughs> Nothing? Okay. 
Um, but we used to window shop all the time. And Bloomingdale's, we're, we're with this collection in 34 stores across the country. And we have six windows on Lexington. And that's just the coolest thing, telling the story of batiking and everything and the people that we work with in West Africa. And it's pretty awesome, so. Okay, I, the most influential person in your life. Um, it's hard to say most, but I will say one of the most is my dad. Um, he stepped in when my biological father stepped out. And he was the first person to meet me uh, like two weeks old before um, any other, anyone else um, besides just family. And he married my mom when I was one. They're divorced now, but he is the reason why I'm a Dawson and I have my brother, who technically is my half-brother, but don't count. Um, and he's also a big reason as to why I have my daughter because I just thought it was really remarkable that someone could choose to be, to step in and father someone that wasn't theirs at such a young age. I think he was like 21. And um, so when I found that out when I was around five or six, I remember going, wow, so you're telling me that had he not stepped in, it could just be you and me, mom, and then who would want to take on an older kid? So at that age, at five, I remember making the decision that I wanted to adopt and I wanted to adopt older. And my daughter, um, Isabella, is now 19, um, and she moved in with us when she was 11. And that's a big, she's, she's my, she's a big part of my whole world, and he's a big part of that. Mike? Gosh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's hard to follow that. That, that was, felt like that the wave. That was a beautiful answer. Yeah. <laughs> right, it came from the back, that was dope. <laughs> came on late from the back. All right, let's move on to rapid fire fun. <laughs> all right, here we go, favorite movie of all time. Rocky Horror Picture Show, no. Wow. I do have to say, though, I watched Everything Everywhere all at once in the theater four times. Michelle Yell for the win. That movie's amazing. Really close second. If you were a superhero, what would your superpower be? To speak every language. And I, I think music, like, instruments count. Like, I think that's just the most incredible thing to be able to communicate with people. That's a good one. That's the first time we had that answer. That was a great one. Thanks. Favorite cartoon growing up? Bugs Bunny. Uh, Come on, Waskily Wabbit, let's go. Though, yeah, because you had all the things. You had my aluminum Q36 explosive space mobulator. You had like all the things, which isn't it weird? He doesn't say that anymore, the new one. That's weird. <laughs> I like TMNT too, the, the original, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Favorite breakfast cereal of all time? Cabin Crunch for the win. All right, tell us either a band or a song that you're into that would surprise us all. A what? A band or a, a song band that you're really song. into that would surprise us. I don't know what would surprise you. This, this group, I think, is pretty interested in a lot of things, though it does I seem to be weird to people that I'm a Rob Zombie fan. Um, and I've been in two of his movies, yo, that's so dope. I was a reject in The Devil's Rejects. I got my throat torn out by Dr. Satan. You thought it would have made the cut, didn't. And then I do a voice of a character in The Haunted House of El Superbisto. Okay. Love me some Rob Zombie. All right, first car growing up. Oh, I think it was a Thunderbird. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what, I don't remember what it was. It was just remember it had this like, it was a white car and it kept breaking down. Yeah. And, and we gave it up because we couldn't afford the gas after my brother was born. And then a few years later, my mom was working for a uh, company and they had this van that they had got trashed. And um, they were, sell were going to sell it to the dump for 50 bucks. And she was like, can I buy it for 50 bucks? And we had to trade out two of the doors and this is that era, man. I mean, the sliding door in the back, they would bungee cord open. That was our air conditioner when we would go out to Fire Island Beach on the weekend. I mean, just the lap belts. Like, I, I think our parents wanted us to survive childhood. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I'll always remember that van in particular because for some, we used to go camping a lot and leave Manhattan and I remember us going upstate and the first time we'd ever seen a roadkill and it was this dead squirrel with its eyes popped out and me and my brother were so fascinated and we were like, we should name the van that. And literally that was the name of our van. Hey, are we taking the dead squirrel with its eyes popped out to the beach this weekend? No? Okay, maybe next weekend. 
Okay. Uh. All right, last one. Most memorable gift you ever got as a kid? Oh, um, I would have to say my grandmother did the thing of like staying up for the Cabbage Patch Kid like over Christmas. I think she fought someone in the store. And the reason why I think I hear about this because my mom was so mad at me because immediately as soon as I got it, I was so stoked. And then I painted its fingernails. And my mom was like, no! <laughs> Do you know what grandma had to go through for that? Though I have to say a really close second, and I wasn't a kid when I got this. I think it was in my late teens or 20s. But remember when Tickle Me Elmo came out? I wanted that so bad, and it was expensive, and so my mom couldn't get it, but she got one from the junkie down the street, <laughs> minus the battery pack that actually made it vibrate, so it was just, I called it the Smuggle Me Elmo, because it was like, it just had this pocket in there that you could put things in. These are the best answers we've ever had in the history of Rapid Fire Fun. <laughs> God. I have to say, Billy's answer of collectibles, and he said second place trophies was such a win. I was sitting back there going, I, the only thing I can say is receipts. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I just can't get over the idea that the odds of somebody in this audience getting you a squirrel that's been run over with his eyes popped out, taxidermy, sent to your house is, I don't know, three to one? Four to Ooh. one? Yeah, so just, I mean. Yo, if someone cosplayed as that, could you imagine? <laughs> Brian, just I think me, we just got one last photo, question. We asked the last question. I mean, what does it feel like to have your own little figure, your own pop? I'm obsessed. I love it. Um, there are so many Ahsokas that, you know, are not in my version of her, and I have all of them, and they're amazing. Um, and I really hope Ashley will sign them for me. Um, and... And I... But I have to say one of the cool things, which I didn't realize is that the Star Wars, Star Wars ones are bobbleheads. Yep. And I always wanted a bobblehead, so <laughs> yay. Rosario Dawson, everybody. Thank you. You're absolutely amazing. Great answers. Thank you for being here. I can go that guy, because you know, especially when you're in California, there's always that guy, no matter how cold it is, who's in flip-flops and shorts. Ooh. Ooh, I think I might be going, dude, look at this mouth. I think I'm gonna go with the tiny stash. Like, why go big when you can go small? See that? Look at that. Wait, oh, is it there in there? Oh, wait, no! Look at how cute. Oh my God, he's got a little stash. She's almost like having three eyebrows. This is wonderful. Attention. Ooh, what does that sound? What have you been eating? I, I'm going with the idea that this is a Latina because, you know, I have my stash growing in on a regular basis and I think that's just like totally normal. So, um, but I think I'm gonna go with it because it's hot. Um, we're, we're here, we're in San Diego, it's Comic-Con. People are going for it with these insane costumes and you know they're just like puddles in their boots. Like that's dedication. So, okay. Hold on, purple's my favorite color. Sorry, gonna pull your head off. It's coming together, right? Because I got my stash, so why not? I mean, I want to give the saber. Mine, mine was green. My master's was blue, though. Why not? I mean, I kind of have to go with the saber because, you know, I didn't see the skirt. I kind of like the no legs kind of thing. It's a little mermaid-ish. Maybe that's what's going on under here. I'm going to go with it. Probably did this wrong. Yeah. This is dope. I have not seen this vibe and look before, but you're just serving. Yeah. Amazing. I love, 